Hi, this is Akin. Welcome back to my channel. We have an interesting story from the um, New York Post about uh, how Trump could uh, kick a certain uh, gang out of the uh, United States. Yes, it's from the um, New York Post by Jenny Tars. Not sure how it's pronounced. Says how Trump could finally kick Trindiagua out of the U.S. as the Biden administration stopped deporting Venezuelans. Hmm. So more than 800,000 Venezuelan migrants have poured into the U.S. in the last four years, including hundreds of members of the brutal prison gang Trindiagua. But the Biden administration gave up trying to deport the criminals and the gangbangers in January at the defense when the government stopped accepting deportation flights from the U.S. Hmm. It's a problem President-elect Donald Trump will have to solve in order to make good on his promise of mass deportation. Well, I know he probably uh, put some screws on uh, the Venezuelan president. So Tom... Omen, the man Trump has taped or tapped as his border star, has led to lead the lead the deportation and the border security efforts. Said the incoming administration had a lot of leverage in, to force Venezuela to start accepting deportations, including threatening to even more sanctions and withhold aid, which is two hundred nine million dollars last year. He got El Salvador to take back MS-13. He got Mexico agreed to the Remain Mexico program. So I have faith that President Trump to work with the President of Venezuela, woman said. Venezuela has been the biggest source of migrant traveling to the U.S. Millions of Venezuelans have left their home country in recent years, fleeing the corruption, the economic collapse brought in by the communist regime of President Nicolas Maduro. Yes, Maduro, Maduro. You can make all jokes about him all day. The Biden administration instituted policies to give Venezuela's temporary protection status, which shield them from deportation and fast track work permits, making the journey even more attractive. So, Trindiagua saw an opportunity winning the influx of Venezuelans in the U.S. and beginning to pose as asylum seekers as they sneak into the country. Many members avoid getting the gang's signature tattoos to go undetected when crossing the border. Former acting ICE chief Ron Vertilo, who served during Trump's first term, said that the gang only began to show up on the radar of border authorities and local cops during the Biden administration. There has been an arrest of a Trindiagua member in and reported CBP data before 2021. Think of that. That's incredible. I was in the government for 34 years. I never heard of Trindagua until I left in 2021 when it became a thing in New York, Ventilo said the Post. The Venezuela prison gang now has set up shop in at least 16 states, and its members have included or committed horrendous crimes, including the murder of a Georgia nursing student, Lakin Riley, whose uh, murderer is now be facing uh, life in prison. The memorandum on deporting Venezuelan migrants means that the Trindagua Bank members can't be deported either, even when cops identify them as a threat. Some members of the gang had been released from custody at the gang busted for minor crimes and went on to commit violence. One alleged example is well, I don't care if I mispronounce his name. Ni Fred Serpa Acostos, who ICE official arrested early this year for multiple thefts, but released him on July 17. A month later, he made headlines when he was allegedly part of a on crew who stormed an apartment complex in the suburbs of uh, Aurora, Colorado. Serpa Acosto has already admitted to being a Trained Agua member and has tattoos to prove it before ICE released them. Homeland Security sources told previously told the Post. Venezuela has been accepting U.S. deportation flights almost weekly until January. Porter 
Wall Street Journal, deaths all came to a screeching halt when the Biden Harris administration imposed new sanctions on the authoritarian regime and is now to try to figure out how to start deporting Venezuelan criminals again. Here's how he can do it. Wes Tubler, who was in charge of the Drug Enforcement Administration offices in Caracas in 2012, said restoring the deportations could be done through a business-like approach to crush the oil-rich country economically. They won't have a choice with Trump because if he extends his hand and tries to do something with the unreasonable and Maduro puts his finger up at Trump, Trump is going to do everything he can to crush them economically, said Tobo. A spokesman Trump didn't respond to a request for comment. While the tax is complicated, Trump could make attempts to forcibly send Venezuela's gangsters back to the country without the permission of the government, says Venezuelan dissident Daniel de Marto. At least one occasion when this happened with Haiti, the U.S. Coast Guard forcibly sent people back to the coast of Haiti without the consent of the Haitian government, says the Marto, who is also a fellow at the Manhattan Institute, an operation like this could involve shipping deported migrants to the Caribbean or Colombia and then put them on boats that land in the beaches of Venezuela. Another option is to pay another country to house deport migrants. John Faber. Tor, who previously had Denver ICE offices, Trump could certainly approach a country like Colombia in exchange for aid and economic trade. However, Colombia, who is struggling with an influx of 3 million Venezuelan refugees, is likely to be reluctant to take convicted criminals from the U.S. So, my administration has dug a big hole for the Trump administration to take care of this situation. We had to see what happens, but if Trump was able to do it the first time around, he should be able to do it the second time around. It's just that, well, folks, four years ago, you elected uh, the wrong government to lead the U.S., and uh, now you, you're paying for it. And other people who didn't want this, now paying for it dearly. So this is Al Can't Say So Long For Now, and don't forget to stop.